Hi, and welcome back to Two Restless Retirees. Actually, it's just one today. He's out doing stuff, but he'll be back. So today we have decided to bring you a throwback video from uh, something that we did back in 2020, I think it was. Today is October 26, and it is Phoebe's Gotcha Day. Now, if you don't know who Phoebe is, she is our 18-year-old cat. And Phoebe rides with us. She travels with us in the motorhome. She's a great traveler. She's an awesome cat. And we got her four years ago today. So I did a video uh, back in 2020 uh, for two reasons. One is because, you know, everybody wants to talk about their cat. Um, but also to kind of showcase the idea of adopting a senior cat. I still feel very strongly about that. And I'm so glad that we did. And so I'm just going to tell you her story and maybe if you're interested in getting an animal you might consider a senior one after seeing this one about Phoebe because it's been great. She is doing amazing at 18 years old. She still has, she's super healthy. She went to her vet and got all the blood work done and she's great. She's healthy and she's fun and happy and she's spunky and all the things that you would expect from a tortie with tortitude because she has all that for sure. So Without further ado, let's get into Phoebe's story. In September, we were finally able to take our new motorhome out for our first long trip from Utah to Tennessee and back. But when I got home, the longing for a kitty companion was still there. I started to frequent the local Humane Society's website, just looking, mind you. What if we got a senior kitty, I wondered. I read stories about people giving homes to senior animals and what a good fit they could be. We knew we didn't want to start over with a kitten. That's a 15 or so year commitment that would put us into our 80s. So I began searching for a senior female cat. One day in late October, I came across a 10 year old female ginger cat named Gracie Lou Freebush. That name caught my eye as I love the movie Miss Congeniality and of course that's the name of the main character. So on a whim, I jumped in the car and drove up to see her. Well, Gracie Lou didn't want to give me the time of day. She was curled up asleep and wasn't into being disturbed. In fact, I think she even hissed at me. However, on a nearby windowsill, I heard a meow and a loud purring that seemed directed at me. I turned my attention to the windowsill kitty and this is what I saw. A tortie walking back and forth on the windowsill, purring and meowing and rubbing hard on my hand when I reached out. She seemed healthy and definitely friendly, but I could see the fur on her back had been shaved off, making it a little weird to pet her. It turns out this kitty was named Reese's after the peanut butter cup. Obvious, I guess, chocolate and peanut butter coloring after all. The tag said she was 14 years old. Okay, that checked a big box. She was female and spayed, check. She was certainly friendly, checked another box. Well, what was going on with her fur? I asked a staff member and it turns out she had belonged to an elderly person who had recently passed away. Family members brought Reese's in and relinquished her to the shelter. When they brought her in, the fur on her back was so matted they had to shave her whole back. I texted Derek and then sent this video. He was agreeable, because he really liked her too, and I brought her home. It took her a couple of days to adapt but she liked attention and food too much to hide for very long. It wasn't long though before we felt the name change was in order. She just didn't seem like a Reese's to me. So I started thinking about girl names that had a long E sound since she was used to responding to that and came up with Phoebe. It had a similar sound as Reese's and she quickly adapted to it. So Phoebe she became. Phoebe. Are you in there? Phoebe, are you in there? There's a kitty. So this is where Phoebe hides mm -hmm. when we're traveling. Yeah, Phoebe. Yeah. Since Phoebe's been with us, we've found out a few things. First of all, she doesn't act 14. We aren't convinced that's her age. She's no spring chicken though, so it's okay. She loves people food of any kind. We even caught her stealing a potato chip out of the bag, naughty kitty. This is Phoebe, appearing as though she's sitting very nicely. But here's what's really happening. Yeah. Phoebe, sit. Phoebe. 
She's a really good RV kitty. Now she hates the car and she hates her carrier, but she is good about not crying in the RV. She tucks in between the bed and the wall of our bedroom slide out and only comes out to complain if the roads are too rough. The minute we stop, she comes and stands on the slide and rides it out like she's some kind of feline Valkyrie. She's very easy to care for. Her fur has grown back completely and she's one of the best kitties I've ever been owned by. She is strictly an indoor cat. However, she does like to go out into our fenced backyard to eat grass and sun herself on the rocks. We only let her do this, however, if we're there to supervise her. One of the big questions potential RVers who are also cat owners have is how we deal with a litter box issue. In our case, we pondered that question a lot. Previously, we would put the litter box in a bathroom on travel days and then in front of the driver's seat of our diesel motorhome when we were camping. Now this was in our Monaco motorhome, but this wasn't our favorite solution. This, however, is our favorite. This is a litter box enclosure end table I got from Amazon. Now, if you go to Amazon and type in litter box end table, you will get a list of about 30 or so options. Some cats will not use a covered litter box. Case in point, this big guy. He hated them. But I was sure this was the solution I wanted for our RV, so I purchased a covered litter box for home and had that ready when we brought Phoebe home from the shelter. My logic was if she would use the regular covered litter box, in theory, she would use the end table box. Happily, she adapted to the covered litter box just fine. My next step was to order the end table enclosure and we put it together at home and used her current box minus the lid in the end table enclosure. We set it up in the same spot as her regular litter box and let her use it for a few weeks prior to our travel date. All of us RV cat owners know how obnoxious it is to have litter on our floors. The kitty jumps out and scatters the litter all over the place. So the first product that has really helped with that is the type of litter we use. Derek found this, Clean Paws by Fresh Step. It's a really good litter and it helps the scatter problem. But this product is what really made the difference. This is the Gorilla Grip Premium Durable Cat Litter Mat. Now, I know you're thinking, I've had scatter mats before and they don't work. I thought the very same thing. But this one does work. At least this big rectangular one works. There are other shapes. This is the one that we have found works the best. I have put the links to all of these products in the description. So what's the takeaway? I've had many cats over the years, but I don't think I ever deliberately went searching for a senior cat. Frankly, we didn't want our kitty to outlive us. I was also concerned about whether she would adapt to us and what bad habits she might bring. But I wasn't prepared for how sweet she is. She adapted quickly and seems to love us and anyone that comes to our home. She never bites or scratches and is a perfect companion for us. Now, does she have some bad habits? Yes, but her good qualities far outweigh them. Frankly, she probably thinks the same thing about me. So if you're thinking about getting a companion to travel in your RV, consider a senior animal from the shelter. Take your time and find the right fit for you and your family. Understand they probably won't live a long time but the time they do have with you will enrich your life and theirs. Until next time, restless friends, stay safe and take care. Bye for now.